Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1116, the parcel pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The parcel pop-up is a very generic die. It just makes a pop-up parcel or box, and it has an extra mechanism behind it that allows something to pop up and out of the box as the card opens and closes. You can style it like a box, you can style it like a present, it does come with a bow for when you want to make it a present. You can have fun with having the lid of the box come up on the arm so that it actually just opens and reveals something inside. So it works great in a top fold card, but it also works great in a bottom fold card. So for the video today, I thought I would show a technique for making a clear front so that you can see the box in the closed position, but not the items inside the box. Those don't get revealed until you open it. And I thought it would be fun to make mine as a we've moved card. So I've even added some bubble wrap to the front of the card. Now this could easily be adapted into a birthday or a holiday card, just eliminate the bubble wrap, but still use the clear front and then swap out the styling on the box and the contents. You always choose your card size. And for today's card, I went with a piece of navy cardstock, five inches by six inches and scored it at five inches. So that's a one inch flap at the bottom. And then for the inside of the card, I decorated both the square and the flap with just some blue pattern paper. Then I did that again with another five by six piece of cardstock, but this time I just added a little bit to the flap so that it's just a little bit longer, like maybe a 16th of an inch longer. That just helps since it's on the outside going around that fold. Okay, at the top, I'm going to use our new flap and closure die set to make the closure. So first I've die cut the flap that has a fold in tapered tab. So I'll start by just adding some glue to that tapered tab and putting it up behind my card. Now I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle and we do sell both of those items on our website. So you can often find clear plastic like this in your favorite craft store, but if not, they do sell it on Amazon. I like to go for the 0.02 inch or the 500 micron. That's just a little bit thicker. And it does have a coating on both sides. So you would take that coating off to make it clear. And then what I've done is I've just cut a panel of that clear plastic that's five inches wide to match my card, but just a little bit shorter so it doesn't get bunched up under the flap. So it's about four and three quarters on the height. And when I'm working with clear materials, I always use dry adhesives. I just think they adhere better. So I'm just using my ATG gun there to add some strips of tape runner across the bottom flap to hold my clear front on. Okay, remember I'm making a we've moved card, so I'm gonna add some bubble wrap to the front. This would be a step that you would skip if you were doing a different type of card, but I just thought that would be a fun look. And luckily I get to pop some of the bubbles because the ones across the bottom, I really wanna get those flat so that I can put the card over the top layer. And I don't want my bubble wrap to be flappy, so I'll have to figure out some way to pin it down at the top too. So I decided just a thin row of tape runner at the top of the plastic, pin it down, pop those bubbles, and then go in with just a fold over piece of cardstock to hide the adhesive. Okay, back to my flap and closure die set. It does have a decorative die to be able to decorate the flaps, and I wanna decorate the outside of the flap before I add my closure but then I'll save the piece for the inside until after it's on so that it can cover the brad prongs. So what I like to do is just take the washer from that die set and put it in place where I plan to have it and then just pencil through the center so that I know where to stack up my spacers. And then I'm going to put the other half of my closure on the flap of the extra cardstock that I haven't added yet. And so I'm just using the flap as a guide to figure out where it's going to be even and just put my washer in place and pencil through the center. Okay, speeding things along here, I'm going to stack up three spacers. I just went ahead and cut those with double-sided adhesive on the back of the cardstock to make it easy. They're just stickers, I stack them up. And then I'm just using a paper piercer to pierce down through the spacers to get the holes for my brads. Okay, so I've found a couple decorative brads in my stash. I'm gonna put one through the washer and then for the bottom part of the closure, I'm just going to open up the brad on the inside. So that one's done. So it's just washer on top of spacers put on with a brad. For the top one, I'm going to put my twine through the hole first. Then it goes decorative brad through the washer, down through the spacers, and open up the prongs. And then I can use those prongs to just wrap the leftover twine around them, then just secure it with a little dot of glue. 
then I'm able to put my paper over the top to just hide everything and make sure that it's just trapped there permanently. I'm just using some strong red line tape across the bottom and then I'll just make sure that the folds line up to get my flap closure there on the front of the card. And then on the back, I can just open up the layers, add some glue, and secure down the back of the card. Okay, so that's how you can make a cool 5x5 five five flap closure bottom fold clear front card, or in my case, bubble wrap clear front card. There are 14 individual dies in the parcel pop-up, so lots of good generic decorator pieces included. And I'm doing a cardboard box, so I've decided to use a dark craft color for my mechanism, my flap, and my biggest square. And you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. Today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. This piece is the slider arm, and I'll die cut that out of navy. Okay, since I'm die cutting, I'll just keep going here for some of my decorator pieces. The stitched pieces that decorate the box, I'm going to do those out of a little bit lighter craft cardstock. I've got my dark brown arrow since I'm doing a cardboard box, and then I need this little decorative rectangle that is actually part of the slider arm. Okay, I'm going to quickly style my cardboard box before I put the pop-up together. So there's the piece that makes the flap of the cardboard box, and that has a fold-in tapered tab. So when you're doing a cardboard box situation, you would just add the adhesive to the tapered tab and just glue it behind the big square. And then if you want to further decorate that, you do have those decorator pieces that have the stitch lines in them that are sized to fit on that box, leaving a little shadow. And then my last bit of styling is to add my dark brown arrow sort of a this end up arrow that you would see sometimes on moving boxes. Okay, for the pop-up pieces, the first step is to get rid of that little T piece of paper. If that's still in there, pop that out. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is find the folds in my slider arm. So it's a mountain fold, the top one, and then a valley fold. And you do want to make sure you fold right on the line. So I can see here that I got a little crooked with my second fold. So just straightening that up. You can also use a bone folder if you want to, to kind of reinforce those folds. Okay, and then the flaps sticking out to the right are actually reinforcing flaps, so they fold to the back. So let me just fold that top one to the back. That will basically kind of go right in the middle of that hole there to create a notch on that side. And then the long one also folds to the back. And then on the back, I'm not going to glue down the long reinforcer, but I am going to glue down the short one. So the one here, I can just go ahead and add my adhesive all over the inside of that, fold it over and press it down. Okay, so just pinching that until the glue sets up. Now when I look back on the front again, you can see that I have that tab at the top, then I have a couple notches, then I have my long piece at the bottom. So with my blue piece in one hand, I'm going to pick up my craft piece with the other. And the idea is to bring the top part of my blue piece up through the craft piece right in this location. And what I'm looking to do is get the notches on the blue piece into that little T notch area of the craft piece. So the first side will be easy. I can just kind of wiggle it in. In fact, it'll be so loose that you're going to see it just falls right through. Whoops. So let me try that again. So I need to get the notch in the notch on the left side and then holding it so it doesn't fall through again. Now I can grab the craft notch on the right side and just pull it around the blue piece until the notches are in the notches. So that'll just trap those two pieces together. So those two pieces are now hooked together. You can see the notches are in the notches. It just kind of dangles there. It has movement to it on the back. You can see I still have that long piece that I haven't glued down yet. Okay, on the front, I'm going to slow this way down. Okay, bringing just that top tab so it's flat on the front. Remember, this is kind of an accordion folded piece. So the top flap is flat on the front. And then on the back, I can fold down the long piece. So basically, I've gotten everything flattened down. Okay, out here on the end of the craft piece, there's a short little tab and it folds this way and it's actually going to end up getting sandwiched right in between that blue piece. Now you might think, how on earth is that going to happen? 
we need to work our folds on the craft piece now so that we can bring those two together. So back on the front again, I put my thumbs underneath those skinny parts of the craft piece and I push up. So I'm just finding those little folds right here and right here. Then I've got the other end of the skinny piece right where it touches the big large piece. Right there, there's some folds. So those will go the other direction, so mountain folds. So basically by accordion folding the craft piece like this, now look what happens when I turn it around. It's basically brought those two pieces together. So now the blue piece, when it's in its flat position and I open it up, I'm actually able to sandwich in that little craft tab in between the two layers as I glue them down. Okay, back to regular speed, but remember you can back this up and watch that section as many times as you need to. I'm gonna open up the blue and add some glue inside and a little bit at the bottom there too since it'll need to glue to both sides of the little craft tab. And then just keep everything nice and flat, fold the craft tab up and into the adhesive and then fold over the blue tab and that will just trap the craft one in between it. And that is how you get that slider arm attached to the pop-up. There's one last fold in the craft piece. It's right here. It folds to the back. So now that's going to create basically the pop-up box structure with the extra slider arm behind it. So this is how it looks when it's all assembled and ready to go into the card. So I'll show you from all angles. Okay, I could put this inside the card, but actually I am going to decorate first with my decorative box. And before I do that, I'm going to add that little rectangle to the blue panel. So I can kind of pull this up so I can get access to it. And what I'm looking to do is glue that to that blue panel lining up the top edges. So the adhesive needs to go on the blue because the craft rectangle is longer than the panel. And then I wanna make sure that the tail is down inside the box and then just line up the top edges. So when you go to fill the box, everything will be attached to that craft piece that's attached to the blue one. So the craft one is your slider arm. You can see it'll go up and down as the card opens and closes. Okay, I like to add the decorative box to the pop-up before I install it inside the card. And to do that, I just need my adhesive all over the front face of that pop-up and then just stick the box to it. I like to stay a little bit up from the fold just so it doesn't bunch down in there when the card closes. So I just like to give it a little bit of breathing room right along the fold at the bottom, just a teeny bit showing. Now one reason I like to add that box before putting the pop-up inside the card is because then I can go in there and just make sure that I don't have a catch point right where the two pieces meet. So there's kind of a little ledge there. And just depending on what goes on the slider arm, you might find that your item comes down and just happens to hit that ledge just perfectly. So to make sure that doesn't happen, I just like to use regular old scotch tape or you could use washi tape. Any kind of tape across that seam will just make sure that it's smooth and it can't become a catch point for whatever item you put on your slider arm later. Okay, time to add the pop-up to the card. So I will start by attaching the base of the pop-up, which is this section here. So I just need a strong adhesive. I'm a big fan of using glue for this and just coat that with adhesive. And then I want the ends of that piece to line up right with the fold of the card. And of course you can choose your location along the fold. I'm just going to center it. And of course, what's nice about it being glue is that I can just kind of slide it a little bit before the glue sets up to make sure that I get the ends right in the fold of the card and that I feel like it's pretty well centered. Okay, so now I want to attach the other side of the pop-up and I do that by making sure everything is nice and flat, keeping it nice and flat, and then adding my glue to the back of the piece over here. And I can basically do an L of glue. So I can put it on the sides and up, but I need to keep a lot of area in the middle that doesn't have any adhesive. That's where the slider arm is. It's gotta be able to move in there. And then just keeping everything flat, I just wanna close the card against that exposed adhesive. And this is of course a time when you would want to give it some time. Now I have to watch that I'm not popping my bubble wrap in doing this. So I'm just gonna reach in and give it a good press. Okay, a careful first check, opening it up. I can see the slider arm is coming up. 
I'm going to look in from the sides and make sure that my adhesive is down and oh I can see that it's actually not adhered right here and here so I'm just going to go in there and press that down until it sets up. Okay so that is all installed inside my card and ready for filling. There are several great generic decorator dies in the set and a couple of them can be combined to make a sign. So I've got a rectangle and then I have the sign post that has some decorative wood grain score lines on it. And I just did my we've moved sign on the computer. I didn't have a good stamp for it. Okay, and in addition to that sign, I'm using the memory charms, the garden charms, the beach charms, and the lamp out of the family room set. So lots of decorator dies from other sets to create all those little items to fill my moving box. Now, as I'm arranging my sculpture, I have to remember that these have to slide down into that box. So there's a width requirement. And that extra square that comes in the set is actually a good judge of how wide your sculpture can be. I went ahead and cut it twice out of clear. And then usually those two squares just attached with a thin line of tape is a good height that will fit in a five inch tall card. So I created my sculpture on those pieces of transparency. I'm not going to put the flip flops in yet because I think I'll add those after. And then up here at the top, any amount of the transparency that's sticking up above my sculpture, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. Okay, so a couple notes on the bottom. I started up from the bottom of the transparency, I don't know, inch, inch and a half, just because some of it's just going to be hidden in the box. So there was no reason to put decorative items at the very bottom where you would never see them. And then I stayed within the limits of the transparency on width for the TV and the picture frame. But then as I got a little higher, I was able to flare out a little bit wider because I know that those items at the top will be higher than those side supports of the box. Now the easiest is probably to go in and just add glue to that slider arm, but of course I'm using a clear material, so I had to try and get in there and get a piece of tacky tape. But I just reach in on the side of the box and feel until the bottom of the transparency is even with the bottom of my slider arm. And that's how I know I have good placement and that it will all fit in there. Okay, now comes the moment of truth where I get to close the card and see if the top stays within the card and it does. So I chose wisely on the height of my piece that it stays within the card, slides up and down nicely. And my last little bit of decoration were the flip-flops. I added them up high enough so that they wouldn't be an issue because they don't have to actually slide down into the box like the TV and the picture frame do. Now, if I were mailing this card, I would use an A7 envelope. It fits nicely in that. It's a little thick because of the bubble wrap, so I'll probably need extra postage. But if I didn't use the bubble wrap, I wouldn't. It would actually mail just for a single stamp. Okay, I'm ending with design team cards, but I'm doing it quickly because this is a very long video. I did want to point out that the parcel pop-up is wide enough to hold a standard size gift card. Karen here just decorated the pop-up as a coffee cup. This one I like lowest that she added a gas can. The parcel pop-up is so generic, you'll be able to use it really for any season, any holiday. Just swap out whatever you're having come up out of the middle. You can obviously use your stamps, you can use dies, you can use pre-made embellishments, some combination of all three, pattern paper, I mean just have fun with it. Our design team is just amazingly talented and they are big participants in our Facebook group, the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps, so they're constantly posting cards in there, as well as a lot of people from all over the world, so great place to join if you want pop-up inspiration using our dies. Love how Sandy decorated it as a cake on this card. Also great just for floating greetings. And then check out these ideas by Karen Aiken, turning it so that it becomes a snake with a stick out I love you tongue, covering the whole front of the pop-up with clouds and then a dragon pops up in the middle. And then this one's very clever. She actually added extra arms so that the penguins and the igloo all slide up as the card opens. The parcel pop-up die set will be available on our website as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers starting mid-November 2019. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. 
You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.